This is silver brush. Yeah. Okay. Great. Tremendous amount of detail. I mean, minute detail that the artist is very keen to get correct. That's the one thing I'm always so impressed with these artists. So what they want is a brush that will allow them to get it very, very, very small and in the detail that is needed. So that's what Ultra Mini does. But what makes this brush a better brush is the fact that, again, it's got the comfort grip handle, which is our handle alone, and the little teeny miniature head. Now, the, ha the hair is 100%. Uh, it's, a, it's called Taclon, which is a synthetic fiber. So you would be able to use it. So what do I have here? I've got acrylics. I've got fluid acrylics, which I adore. I've got ink. I've got ink. I've got um, walnut ink. And I also have watercolors over here. So I've got a plethora of all kinds of paint that, you know, I think kind of touches everything that you guys might be working with. So as I said, you know, some, uh, you know, we, first of all, I want to show you some of the new packaging. We've completely repackaged the entire series. And we've got some beautiful new package with uh, designs that were loaned to us and given to us by none other than Peggy Harris. Because if there's anyone that knows how to paint detail in very, very small miniatures, it's Peggy Harris. So this is her, one of the packages that we did with, with one of her designs. And what I thought I'd also show you is one of her little, little designs here. Notice how minute it is and how small and all of the little detail. And, you know, we do sets for Peggy Harris also with just her brushes in it. But, and they also incorporate ultra mini brushes. But notice the detail that's in Question, how much here. water does it hold? Or, or it holds it a hold? very little. It doesn't hold a ton. It can't hold a ton because you don't have any length out. You don't have any width. So it's very, very small. So if you need to make that little bit of, um, that little dot that you need, you don't want too much. So you're getting in there and you're painting on the very, very smallest of surfaces. So that's why I brought this over here. This is a stencil. And um, believe it or not, we've had people send us um, paintings that they did on a, on a little piece of rice, of all things. And I didn't understand how they were that patient. And, you know, you, you, it's something that, you know, if you want to get that detail in there, it's very important that you have the right tool. And Ultra Mini is very different from anything else that's out there because number one, it's always gonna be hold up, it's always gonna be resilient, it's always gonna be the strongest filament that you have. So if you wanna use these brushes for years and years to come, that this is the one to do. Now I've been using this brush for a very, very long time and you know it, it does a perfect job for what I needed to do. Then we have lots of other brushes as well. Why don't we do this? Why don't we do a quick reset? So just so everyone knows what's going on, I don't know that there's a way that I can really show you what's happening, but what we've done today for the first time ever is we're actually broadcasting on both Facebook and Instagram at the same time. So we got the Instagram started, and then we had some problems for about five minutes with the Facebook, and now we've got the Facebook going. So now we're, we're broadcasting on both channels simultaneously. So for those of you who were watching on Facebook that were wondering why did we just sort of join in in the middle, that's why, and I apologize for that, but it, it's squared away now, and here we are. Um, so we started out just talking a little bit about the history, and I know the most important thing, the most enjoyable thing is watching you paint and, and work with the brushes, but I did want to dive in quickly, and I want to let everybody know, again, we're going to be giving away four of these Ultra Mini sets today uh, at the end at uh, 12.45, so in about 35 minutes, uh, we're going to do the giveaway. Uh, we're going to give away these four sets. So this is brand new. Um, these sets, the brushes have been around for a while, but this is a, a whole new set now from Silver Brush. Um, and we're excited to be presenting this to you. We're very happy to have it. Um, this is going to be available within the next month in um, your retail stores, whether right. in the United States or around the world. Uh, wherever your Silver Brush reseller is, uh, they're going to have these sets. Um, so, you know, we could go through the litany of who carries it, but, uh, and we appreciate all of them. Um, you can certainly ask, and we're happy to help you. Um, 
I wanted to ask you about copycats because you originally came out with this. This was the first of its type in the right. art material world, right. um, and now there are some copycats out there. there. That's fine. Yeah. You know, we believe in the free market. But the question is, what makes Ultra Mini different? It's it's the strength of the filament. It's it's the ability I'm gonna, I'm that it will be very very long okay. lasting. Okay. Um, we have um, a fellow who does a great deal of illustration for birds, and he has been using one of our Ultra Mini for years upon years upon years, and periodically he'll buy a bunch, you know, 24, 36 of the same brush over and over and over again, because he's able to use it for years and years and years. Remember that, yeah, you can get it a lot less expensive, but it's going to wear out very, very quickly. It's the durability, it's, it's the construction. So how, we have some good questions here. So uh, among the questions is, how do I care for this brush so that it lasts a long time? Well, remember, the, it's the same thing with all brushes. You want to make sure that the head is, is down slightly when you let it dry. Let, it, let the head go down. You want to make sure that you clean it at the end of your session. And, uh, well, one of the things I'm going to share with everybody here is our silverbrushcare.com website. Mm -hmm. So for those of you interested in long-term care of your brushes, uh, we have tips and tricks on our website specifically for you. Uh, www.silverbrushcare.com and of course here on Facebook and Instagram we, we post a lot of those as well. Kira does a great job um, with keeping you all up to date with that but the website is specifically it has videos on how to care for the brushes as well as some written material um, so there's that as well. Okay mm -hmm. great. Um, there was another question about and this I think is where you were about to go and that was the variety. So, so oh, well, Ultra Mini is a very diverse line, well, we and have, they wanted to know about different shapes and sizes. Well, we have 29 different shapes and sizes. I mean, that's, that's a lot for a little miniature line. Uh, so you would, you, anything that you want to do, this is a little fan, which I, I love this fan. This is, uh, again, this is an, an acrylic paint. And so if you have a small area that you want to put, I should really be using green so that it looks like grass, this is our grass comb. So what can you use this for? Well, with the right color, and let's do that with some black so I could show you Santa's beard. Well, but I guess Santa's beard is white. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll just say that this Depends is Depends how old he is. <laughs> yeah. But this is, you know, if you're doing someone's hair, Look how perfect that is for someone's hair. Now, it, it really also depends on the size of the painting that you're doing, but if you need to be in control and you really need to hold something close up, you really want to use a brush that has a very small head. But what I love about this so much is the handle. The handle's so comfortable. Some of us that are past our teens, uh, we really like something that we can hold that doesn't give us a cramp all day and you won't get that with this brush. It's very unique that way. Yes, there are lots of imitations. I've seen them myself on the web and I, I cluck my tongue and know that they're probably going to wear just that one time when you're doing the painting and then it's they're probably gone. You'll probably throw it away after that. Now what's that uh, media that you just this, used? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Walnut Ink. And, you know, today, yeah, lots there. of people are doing different things, some beautiful collages that I've seen with photographs, whether they're doing it for scrapbooking or, or whatever they want to do it for, handed out as gifts. I mean, we're all stuck inside a, a great deal, so we want, you know, people are very, very creative. So here I've taken this, and if you wanted to use the walnut ink on a photograph, you know, and heighten someone's face, you know, you might be interested in doing that. Now, I don't know about the photo reproduction or anything like that of walnut ink, but, you know, everybody experiments with something different. This is one of my very favorite brushes. I named this the Teardrop. Why is that? Because look at that little teeny head. And it's actually, I felt, for can those of us... turn it a little so I can see the angle? Sure. There we go. Thank you. Notice, notice it has a really tight angle. And what's made this so interesting is the fact that folks need, lots of times they want to paint on a very small surface. And the smaller surface I can see is my, my watch. And, you know, if you can paint on rice, then you might want to be interested in painting on a bigger canvas, which is the face of this watch. And, you know, there's lots of little things like I, I showed you here. This is a very small piece, and um, you definitely might want to paint 
this, but get that detail right in there. What the advantage is of this particular head is the fact because it's an angle, you can actually see what you're painting. And tell me that's not a great thing, to be able to see every single thing that you're painting. Um, there's nothing harder, to, for me anyway, than to not be able to see the actual piece that I'm painting. So here I am, I put this in here, and I've got a little bit of artwork going on in there, and it's starting to look like something. So that is fluid acrylics, by the way. And um, I showed you some, this is uh, traditional acrylics, this is also, um, this is walnut ink, but I'm also going to show you regular ink. Now this is this is black ink, and then I also have um, ink over here. Now a lot of you are doing all kinds of interesting things with ink. This is not the best surface that I'm using here. I need something a lot more absorbent and interesting that I find it out now. <laughs> um, so this is. Um, you can see how really nicely it, you can get in there. Now you can use other brushes, you can use round brushes, you can use something with a point, but how much easier is it to use this and be able to see all of it without struggling? I like to not struggle. Listen, this is a, this is a tough enough time. We don't need to struggle anymore. We need to have something that we enjoy a great deal. And this is a very enjoyable way of just doing my artwork. And once again, I'm getting into that little butterfly wing. I'm working it in. And maybe by the end of this demo, I'll have that kind of finished. I'll be able to take off the black and show you what I've been able to accomplish. So that was watercolor I did. I did um, walnut ink. I did regular inks. I got a little bit of fluid acrylic over there. I got I'll give you a little bit more fluid acrylic. And this again is this tear, this lovely teardrop brush that I love so much. Um, this is actually a hidden, wonderful little line. It really is. Imagine painting all day and not having an exhausted hand. I think that's really worth everything. Um, there's nothing more um, annoying. It, it, it doesn't become a hobby then. It doesn't become something enjoyable. It becomes a real chore if your hand is hurting you at the end of the day. So, you know, it, it, it really makes a lot of sense to get Let the Let me right jump tool. in and, and comment on a few things I'm seeing here. So, sure. questions about where things are available. <clears throat> so, um, and I apologize, I didn't see every comment that's come through, but I saw someone in the UK asking, um, Jackson's um, does carry our products in the United Kingdom and around Europe um, on their website. Uh, we appreciate them and, and they do a great job. Uh, I noticed someone asked about Blick. Yes, on Blick's website, these are available as well. And, and Jerry's uh, around also well. asked if KD Art Store in India. Yes, these are also available in India um, through KD Art Store. Um, so if I missed your question, I apologize. You could probably just repeat it. Uh, we're doing you know what we can, of course. But yes, if someone mentions versatility, absolutely. And um, okay, keep going. So what other shapes? So this this is a nice little liner. This is a, this is my design around. Oh, someone asked if they're available now. Yes, these brushes oh, yeah. have been in the line for more than twenty years. Oh no no um, no! So actually, almost thirty years. Almost well, more, that yeah. is more than twenty. Yeah. Um, so yes, so they've been around a long oh, yeah. time. Um, we mentioned the new packaging on the on the sets, and That's that all. is the new packaging which we're very excited about. But uh, the brushes are still available there, and we actually have some more sets here that you can see. So there's a nice. 12 piece set. We even have a 29 piece set, which is one of every single one. Uh, that's actually so large it comes in the, in the box and that gets you the whole thing. Um, so all of these are available through those various uh, retailers. Make a little bit of. So this is a very interesting brush. Many years ago, if you can recall the days before computers, we need a little spotter brush. Not everyone does recall the days before computers. Okay, before computers okay. And, fo and Photoshop, many, many, most photographers took a picture and they needed something to take out a blemish or something like that in the negative of a, of a photograph. So they needed a little brush like that that has very, very small length out. See that? And it's called a spotter. So that's still a spotter. but. I continue to use the spotter.
because it doesn't hold that much paint. So it gives you the opportunity to get in, get into a small little space and just put a spot of paint down. So here I am, I'm using my spotter in the most interesting way. You see that? Um, so it, it doesn't hold a lot of paint, and you'll see that I'm not able to do very, very long lines, but it does give you a little bit of paint, and it might be the perfect tip for something that you're working on. Now, I thought I'd just show you some other photos of also Peggy Harris work. Um, she's a wonderful, wonderful artist. She and I have been associated for years. But notice the little tight pieces that she's got over here. And she may have been using the spotters right in some of these. She uses a lot of very, uh, of our brushes, but I thought some of these would show you the little tiny areas that she was able to paint. And you may be painting a lot bigger. You may be painting um, much larger surfaces. But there's an awful lot of folks that like to paint very, very small. This is also Peggy Harris's painting. And notice her beautiful bunny. She did these on some boxes years ago, and the, they were just magnificent. And little Tinkerbell over here, and the little bunny's eyes and nose and ears, and his feet and all of that. You need detailed brushes. You need brushes that get into those spots that hold up, that don't fall apart, that don't crumble. I mean, there's... Listen, there's lots of inexpensive uh, alternatives today. The, the problem is they're inexpensive alternatives and you get what you pay for, especially in brushes. Um, there, there really is a huge difference. Um, you know, I, I look at online also and I see what's coming in from overseas and I know that you, you will get 20 brushes for $20, but you're going to have 20 minutes worth of painting also. Question if Silver Brush has a Peggy Harris specific set. Three. Three sets. So on silverbrush.com, silverbrush, yes. uh, go to silverbrush.com, you can see the sets to see the contents I of them. I think they're up there at a, this point. I think the new ones are up there at this point. Um, we just, just repackage them. They're very, very beautiful. Um, what is wonderful about the Peggy Harris sets is that there's a great variety and a, and a diversity in them so that you can use, uh, all, there's ultra minis in there, there's a couple of silver silks in there that hold a lot of moisture, um, there's uh, ruby satin, and anybody that's ever used ruby satin and knows. And I think Kira's writing that they're available in Jerry's Artorama. Oh, so there you that go. Makes, you don't even have to come to our website. There now. you go, you can um, get you know, right to purchasing. Question about filberts. Filberts. So, we have a filbert right here. You showed it earlier. But I did show it earlier. I wish I could find it now. There's so many. Um, remember that. But yes, there are. There is a filbert. Oh, in the absolutely. Ultra here it is. Okay. Now remember what the filbert does. The filbert does a couple of things. Put that so over it, the white, please. Oh, uh, sure. So I'm sorry. The head. Yeah, yes. Thank you. So there you go. It looks like a bird's wing or a tongue, or a cat's tongue or a flower petal. Right. You're going to get, be able to get a lot of detail with that particular brush, and it's it's really um, probably one of the most used brushes that I have because it's so versatile. So let's let's do a little more painting, and I'm sorry I don't have any green here. Um, that doesn't do me any good. Uh, let's do go back to red over here, and I'll put the red over here. Notice how nicely that's that's covering that that. Uh, by the way, this is just a piece of cardboard. I really would have been smarter in, if I had used oh, watercolor paper. But I was looking to make something very, very small and stiff, and this is what I decided to use. I'm not sure about my... A uh... couple of questions asking if we host online contests for artists. I think that's a pretty good idea, and that's something we were talking about doing this spring. Now, so, when you say online contests, what do you mean? You mean in terms of artists submitting artwork to us, yeah. and then we do a judgment, and then we, we send out gifts. I think that's a great idea. Um, but, you know, we have to be able to tell you uh, what series uh, we yeah, want we you would, to highlight. Yeah, that's a good, we just set the contest. We right. pick a date, name the series, and then show us your work with the series. Right. Yeah, we yeah. can definitely do that. It really is something that we can do. So, here we have a little bit of the butterfly done, a little artwork done, and you can see how easy it is, really easy, to get into that small space. It, You know, a lot of people really enjoy 
the detail work that comes with art. And this is a brush that will give them the opportunity to do, to do that. So let me show you some strokes with this too, so that you have a feel for it. Uh, do I wanna do ink? I'm gonna do some ink. So this is the Filbert. Notice how much paint it holds. And I keep on painting. And then we're gonna get some drops. Some more. This is ink. Hmm. You get less holding with ink. But lots of folks like to use ink, of course, for calligraphy. So there's my name. And so that, lots of times they'll do that. But this is a very versatile brush. And I'm getting, uh, this is the beak. You said you'd, you've got your name. There it is. Now there we can it is. see your and name. I, I'm D -E -E. sorry. There, there I am. Go. Okay. There I am. Got it. Better known as mom. <laughs> okay, so this is a line. <clears throat> so this is a brush that I put in just a, a, a few years ago. And um, one of these, I believe, is in Peggy Harris's uh, set. It's the, the real small one. I think it's the 20 zero. And that's because you can get very, very fine lines with that. <clears throat> and notice how long the length out is. You see that long length out? So what have I taught you in the past? I've taught you that the longer the length, the more paint it will hold. The longer the length, the less control you have. So we're going to be able to do nice long uh, strokes with this. But I'm not going to be able, certainly not me, I'm not going to be able to do an awful lot of control with that. But yet we're getting nice, nice long stroke. And what is good is that fact that you can get all that detail. What the what what brushes really are are controlling. What you want to do is be able to control the brush, so that you can always go back and you can continue doing that same method that you created before. So we need to be able to create the control. Okay, I I know you're going to like this question. So someone asked that long length out liner. That's a rigger, right? Okay, it's a liner. A rigger, you know, I know people use the, the term rigger and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I'm old school and um, the original rigger brush was a sign painting brush. And it actually had a very, very flat head. Not dissimilar to this, actually. This is pretty flat over here. And they used it to paint rigging on boats. That's where the name comes from. It comes from painting the rigging on boats. So you want to be able, and actually this does look like a, a traditional rigger to me. It's a long length out. Notice how flat the tip is. Let me show you that. Yeah, turn it a little so they can see the, uh, the side profile. You see that? Yeah. See how flat that is? Now you should be able to get a long, long stroke with this. And... But a rigger was rounded, right? Not flat. It actually was rounded. Okay. That, that is correct. But this gives you an opportunity to get those long, long strokes, and you can paint the rigging on boats. Now, if you've ever seen boats, you've seen some beautiful, beautiful artwork on boats, and people are very, very uh, clever with their, with their artwork. And most of the time, they're using a brush list like this because they want to be able to paint long, long, long lines. So that's where the... Uh, so they call it a rigger in the modern world, but really those are not. They're liners. They're called... There's all kinds of liners. The script liner, which is a longer length out. There's a monogram liner, which is a shorter length out. And there's a traditional liner that's a medium length out. And all of them give you a different, a different uh, ability to hold color. The longer the length out, Remember, the longer the length out, the less control, but the more paint it will hold. And that's probably fine for a lot of you. You probably want to be able to just do a very, very long line. And let's continue to do that. Okay. So, you know. Good questions. Really good questions. Yeah. No, I, and I hope you um, enjoyed the answers, too. Yeah, many people saying they love hearing the, uh, the history. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. It's, that's where it's from. And... Keeping in mind, as I remind you each and every Facebook Live and every single time I talk to you, I am not an artist. And you can tell that I'm not an artist. I'm a doodler, like many of you. So just, I know you've said it before earlier, but people come and go. Um, 
the synthetic filament in the Ultra Mini. Mm -hmm. That's a golden Taclon. That is correct, but it's a very, very interesting golden Taclon. It's got a multi-diameter filament and um, water over here. It's got a multi-diameter filament, which means that it's not all the same. It's not all the same, and that's what makes it a better quality brush than anything else that's on the market. So what happens with a lot of uh, folks is all of their filaments are exactly the si same size. Particularly with something this small. Said something this small, few. very easy. But what happens with that, there's no friction on the filament itself, and the paint just flows out. I'm sure that you've had that experience. You've had that experience where the paint just flows out. That's because there's no friction on the filament. Because we use multi-diameter filaments, and that's sort of the depiction of multi-diameter filaments. I'm, I'm making it funny. But you get wonderful friction. So what do we do? We take six to eight, ten different size filaments. We mix them together, and we, then we make the brush. That way it creates that wonderful paint bond that you have with the brush. So you can, you can use, this is just fluid acrylic. I mean, uh, you know, fl fluid acrylic does have a nice little bit of tackiness on it, which is one of the things I love about it. But, you know, and, and you can also use this for watercolor because the paint's just not going to run off. Let me use some watercolor over here. I, I generally prefer, um, this is all watercolor. It's a little kit I bought myself. And let's use some watercolors so that you can appreciate um, so in terms of the versatility of the Ultra Mini, we've looked at pretty much every water-based media. There were folks earlier asking about gouache, obviously, if it can I use it in watercolor. I didn't, think, I didn't think to put gouache down, but gouache is perfect for this as well. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Uh, this is the watercolor. Um, but I was, So I do have a large variety. I have the walnut ink. I have regular ink. I have fluid acrylic. I have regular acrylic, and I have watercolors. So, you know, although I forgot the gouache, I did leave it to everybody to remind me. Um, I, I, you know, I know that this brush will work with any, any kind of water media. Now, <clears throat> I've never seen uh, a problem with these brushes. Uh, let me do some more watercolor. This is a slightly shorter length out. This is a, this, we call this a design around. This gives us a wonderful holding capacity. Uh, I have these in a lot of different sizes. This comes from, uh, <clears throat> I know we've got a lot of folks that love these. Uh, this is the design around. I think it starts at a two and it goes all the way up to a size uh, 14, 14, I believe. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, you, you, you'll be able to do, and you know, you don't even need to paint miniatures. I mean, th this is, looks like a traditional long, long tip. Look at that long tip uh, body on that. And you'll be able to put a ton of uh, paint on here and do those very, very long lines that people like to do. So let's, let's do more of that. <clears throat> and we'll do it with watercolor. Here you go. We're going to do it with watercolor. Someone mentions that, that the Ultra Mini can even be used for nail art. That's absolutely correct. Well, that's absolutely true. So, you know, when um, I would prefer to use something else, I prefer yeah, to use more this. Detailed, yeah, something more detailed. More right. detail. But um, I, uh, I just uploaded a bunch of new pictures uh, online, and um, one of the things I did was uh, show somebody painting a fingernail. And the only thing is that you do have to be careful about with Ultra Mini is it doesn't like acetone. So if, if you are cleaning... They're really not doing that these days, though. Okay. I mean, it's, well, it's then gone that's to, not the, an issue. to the gels and the acrylics more. Okay. Um, so it's not as necessary as it used to be. Well, that's good. But yeah. you, you could see that this is the brush that you would use it for fingernails. Yep. See that? And of course, because we have so many different shapes, we have so many different sizes, you're able to get in there and do back to the spotter. Here I am, well this is a little round. We'll, we'll try the little round. Um, you can put in little details that you need into such a little teeny, teeny space. See that, I have to use an alternate color. I'm using the same color, that makes sense. Uh, let's see, let's get a red over here. And I didn't know I'd be wearing the paint today, <laughs> so. We're always wearing our paint, right? We're always wearing the paint, right. 
but you see you can get in there with a little teeny brush like this so you know in terms of uh, this brush it, it's there's a great deal of versatility there's a great deal of uh, utilitarian uh, work that you can get done and so you're looking at a painting and you're saying to yourself self I need to paint I need to paint all the things that you see here but I need lots of different brushes but by the way this is Peggy Harris paint, painting again so she needs a a, a brush that'll do the um, the imprint over here springtime and then she needs to do a little bit of grass over here and she needs to do all the little tails and everything else and she makes everything look so easy because that's the kind of artist she is and look how beautiful that comes out now she uses a lot of ultra mini in all of these paintings and you can see the kind of detail um, I'm sorry, I don't Two have... Two questions more. I want to I want to jump in with. They're very mm -hmm. different, but they're really interesting questions. Uh, okay. So one um, from Priya on the Facebook side Hi, is that um, you've got this nice comfort grip handle. Does mm -hmm. that make the brush heavy? No. Oh my goodness! It's just as light as can be. It's um, it's a very very um, comfortable. I, I, that's why I call it comfort grip. It's very lightweight, it's, it's not heavy, and it, it can't be any more comfortable. You can really paint with it all day, I promise. I have arthritis in my hands, and you can see I'm not using gloves or anything like that, because it, it just isn't necessary. It's a really comfortable feel. And I'm glad you asked that. I think, I think we weighed this recently, and I think it was less than an ounce, maybe an ounce and a quarter. That's all it weighs. And then separate question, sure. which I've never considered. Um, we talk about nail art, but is it also something that could be used for eyeliner? Um, I have not used it for eyeliner. I, could, I couldn't tell you. I really don't know. Yeah, I, um, I haven't seen that either, no, so we don't I, know. No, I don't know the answer to You'll that. You'll have to test it and let us know. Yeah. Uh, although eyeliner is a water-based material, and um, it... It probably would work quite well. You just have to be careful not to hurt yourself. Okay. That's all. A couple more minutes before we start giving stuff okay. away. So. Uh, so um, I'm just I'm just doing I'm just putzing around here and and, and uh, playing around. Um, so let me use some more acrylic paint, which I think holds better to this surface. And we're going to do a little bit of a dark red over there, and let's get in there again, and let you see that. Question about the handle, what they're made of. They're made of wood. They're wooden handles. And you can see, see how small that is? I'm, I'm getting into all that detail. Not an easy thing. It really is not. And you have to be extremely patient. And, you know, it, I'm going to use a bigger brush for the outer edge over here. This is a good one. This is the, design, the lettering brush. This is a size 15-0. And this is going to hold a lot of paint. What color should we use? Do you think we should use? I want to jump in because there's another comment that said, you know, if I, knowing that these are good for makeup is a money saver. I, I cannot emphasize enough how true that statement is. The, the same brushes actually of much lower quality that you'll see in, in makeup stores, cosmetic stores, or cosmetics websites, of course, um, you know what we sell to artists at much lower prices so our goat hair mops for example um, make outstanding high quality um, makeup brushes oh, and baby. same for the ultra mini um, you know they, they just have much bigger marketing budgets and marketing costs and so those uh, um, big box cosmetic businesses are very expensive. I go in and, and, and shop for my wife around the holidays and I can tell you I'm shocked when I go to the brush section because I know the quality of what's there compared with ours and the prices and it's uh, you're absolutely right. Well I think one of the things I can tell you is that our line of um, goat hair mop brushes are used extensively in the cosmetic industry. Certainly in cosmetic entertainment. Um, you know I used to uh, speak frequently with a customer of mine in Manhattan and he used to tell me about all the um, the um, gals that would come in and purchase the mops for their client you know to work with their clients these were uh, professional uh, 
makeup people. Sure. And um, you know, he would tell me that you know the, the price and the quality of our of our goat hair uh, mop brushes was so outstanding that you know he used to sell them out every single week. So, and it's sort of like. Um, all right, well, let's circle Jungle back to, to fine art, because sure. I know that's our main audience here. That's so, right. Um, and what shape is this? This is the lettering brush. This is the 15-0 lettering brush. Notice I got most of the wings in the 15 back. 15-0 is the size. 15-0 is the size, that's correct. Okay. We wanted to go very, very small so that you get a, you, you're able to do a lot of detail, and you can see that you can get a lot of, a lot of stroke work out of this. So whatever you're doing, you know, this might be a great brush to add on to your collection. I particularly love also the, um, as I showed you before, the grass, the, um, the fan, because it just does such a great job with um, being able to blend out um, the color. Now, if I had a nice uh, landscape over here and I wanted to put soft grasses in front of it, and just be able to blend it in. This is the perfect brush for that. Let me do. Let me see if I can get some green over here, and show you. Uh, this is watercolor again, and we'll just we'll just do a little bit over here, and we're going to just. I got a little too much on there, but here you go. So if if you've got something that you want to smooth over and show the landscaping. This is just perfect for that. But remember, it is a much smaller size, so you're going to have to work a little bit more if it's a little bit bigger surface. But it's for a little teeny surface like this, and then, then it's perfect. Okay. And well, I guess I can do this too. I can do some things at the, at the edge. Another question about sure. India. Uh, again, KD Art Store carries silver brush in India. Mm -hmm. um, KD Art Store. Right. Back so to the grass see comb. how you can see how really utilitarian that grass comb is. Now I'll go back to the uh, teardrop. That's this guy, which is just it, it's so nice to have the right tool for the project. I'm sure all of us have been very frustrated over the last number of years and say, what can I use to get into that space? And this is the perfect brush. For so that. to clean the golden tacklon once again, just water. Warm water. Is I use your preference? water, and then I also use at the end of this. I use just a little bit of, um, like a, like Kira, a soap. Kira, say hi, everybody. Say hi to Kira. There's Kira. You know what that means, everyone. Ah yes. Kira picks the winners. That's Kira good news. Kira picks the winners. So all I right. use a little bit of, um, you know, soap to to wash all of them. All right. So, anything else you want to say, Mother, before I do the giveaway? I want to tell you that there are 29 different shapes and sizes. Yeah, they all come in this big that's, giant that's set. Here, that's here, but the, this is also the new packaging. This is, again, this is a, a Peggy piece Harris set. artwork. That's a 12-piece set. But this is the 29. We've, you've been working yes. with them here for the past 45 minutes. Yes, this I This is have. all of them. I so, know. yes, 29 different shapes and sizes yeah. of Ultra Mini. Um, it just makes a lot of sense to me that um, people can be able to buy one set with everything in it. It really does. Sure. sure. Just not as just not the cheapest way to start. So of course there's well, you there's know, an you option might want to buy one to or start. two. Yep. And, you know, and if you have miniature brushes at home, you can compare these to the ones that you have. And one of the things I'm really proud of is the fact that when people do that. They give us a one-to-one -one try, they continue to use our brushes. And that's really rewarding for me. It really is. All right. Okay. Let's pick some winners. Okay. So thank you, everyone. We appreciate it. Appreciate the patience. I apologize for uh, the late start on Facebook. That's my fault. We're, we're still figuring this all out. As you know, we'll never really get it all figured out. But um, So we've got four great Ultra Mini sets here to give away. Two from our Instagram audience. So Alex Weintraub in Florida. Oh. One of these enjoy. is going to you, Alex. Excuse me, Alice. I apologize. Alice right. Weintraub. Um, let's do that. There we go. And then the other Instagram winner has the username Small Cup Designs in Boston. Small so Cup. That's small good. Small Cup Designs. That means that you'll like the uh, small miniature. Small brushes for Small Cup Designs. So right. Congratulations. Great. And then on the Facebook side, uh, two winners, Heidi Roy in Indiana, and Dana Smith in Idaho. Oh, so four right sets there. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, this time, thank they're you all for in coming. the United States, but they're certainly all over the place. Well, and thank um, you very much for coming today, too. So we are back in two Thanks. weeks, two weeks from today. So Thursday, uh, February 4th, at this same time, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll do both Facebook and Instagram. And the subject then is going to be the Bristolon Short Handle. Oh. So this is a new brush uh, for Silver Brush. Uh, just been launched within the last year. Uh, very stiff synthetic brush, outstanding um, for water-based material, particularly acrylics. And uh, you're going to you're going to go through all the detail on the Bristolon short handle in two weeks. I right? am, but you know, I just I do want to show you that. Oh, I yeah, need, you even have some here. I I, I actually had to put down um, a white base in the back of this, and what did I use? I used my Bristolon wide uh, bright. This this is this is such an awesome brush. It really is. It just it goes back to its original. Uh, yeah, February fourth. All right, February don't give 4th. it away. All right. So February fourth at twelve p.m. U.S. Eastern time. That's nine p.m. Uh, nine a.m. Pacific time. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you all again in two weeks. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate you, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, everybody. Have a good two weeks. Stay safe. Bye bye.